Now, we are ready to bring back Heather Kirkpatrick, our BD lead, and team of Denise DeLay, Christy Woodward, and Patrice Williams to discuss part two of the takeaways from the first ever APMP's Women's Virtual Summit. Now, let's continue where we left off last week. But before we do, audience, please post your questions in the chat during the presentation. Oh, Heather, you're on mute. <laughs> Even with rehearsals. Okay, so good. Good morning, everyone. We're going to be having some recordings from our panel. And one of the goals in our panel was to share stories, to communicate and engage with our viewers virtually. We will four questions on sharing perspectives on personal victories, overcoming obstacles, mentoring upward career trajectories. Um, throughout the event, we also answered questions from the Whova application. So we'll go first to a video clip and we'll hear from Patrice and her story. So thanks for playing that video clip. I know you've um, stepped up and seen needs. Do you wanna share anything about your journey and how you filled the void or created your own opportunity? Yeah, sure. Um, so much like, you know, the ladies on the panel, um, you know, you start out early on your career, not really knowing where you're going to go and where you're going to focus. But I found myself tossed into boardrooms filled with men. And uh, they were men who were senior in their career. So they had so much information and knowledge. And I would find myself sitting there, um, not knowing what to input or where to insert. Um, and kind of like an odd person at the table. But as I sat there and I observed and I listened, um, I realized that some key pieces in those conversations and planning that they were missing. And so I found my voice at the table by being able to ask you know, those questions that the yes men did not want to ask, you know, and putting myself kind of out there and being a target, you know, for the person who is going to ask the, the opposite in those tough questions. And so, you know, it really helped me in my career um, just to be able to speak out. I know this is about speaking out and shining, right? But I, I had to find my way. You know, I am a woman and then I'm an African-American woman, but I didn't want to use those as barriers um, in my success and progression. So I really focused on the things that, you know, made me unique, you know, with some of the experiences that I had that were unique to the table. So we were working on a lot of um, uh, healthcare um, opportunities and underserved communities. So I used my connection with the community, whether I had, you know, personal family members that lived in the community, or I had done internship work or volunteer work. I use those experiences that a lot of time when we're writing proposals, the people who are writing these stories and these narratives, they don't always have the actual um, information. So we're going anecdotal or just, you know, evaluation and surveys, but not having that personal experience. So, you know, I learned to use my, my personal experience as an asset and it really helped to elevate my career. Yeah, I think definitely that using your personal experience as an asset is a theme that I've heard from all of you. And again, one to be interactive, like with our you know audience, one of the questions is, as you've done that throughout your career, what resources have been helpful to you as you have crafted your experience and be there? Has there anything that's, you know, as that you think about that has has helped you find that? Was it your education? Was it a person? I know we're going to talk about mentoring in just a little bit. Or was it a was it an approach that you had like kind of worked on throughout the years? Did someone guide you in that? So Patrice, could, could you share a little more with that? Sure. Um, so I, I don't have a mentor. I'm not sure that's a good or bad thing. Um, I, I do like learning from people, but what's been helpful for me is I've always identified the people in the room, um, the people on the teams and the organizations that I admire. You know, there was something about that person whether it was their delivery, their approach, um, the way they processed um, their thoughts. And so I would kind of identify those people early on and I would study them. And I would find myself not really mimicking them, but pulling off of their strengths and building mine. And so that's, you know, that's been very helpful for me, but really 
um, finding those key people. So they have, I've used those as resources. And of course, my family, I think when you have those days that are 20 hour days, I think when you, your emotions are running high, you know, the deadline is at 11.59 PM and it's 11.58 and you're still waiting for publishing to give you your, your graphics, you know, you lean on your family to, for support. You know, they're your, your biggest cheerleaders and family in this sense is whoever you think your family is. It can be a colleague. It can be, you know, your real blood family. It can be your friends. But I really relied on them um, to keep me going um, at the end of the day. So between family and just identifying those colleagues that were stars in the industry, um, I, I pulled on them for, for my resource and for my support. Great. Thank you, Patrice. And I know you're on the line today, too, and we can answer questions. We'll go first now to our next segment where we talked about guiding principles. And in this segment, we'll hear from Christy as well as Denise. Well, I, I just wanna build on what she was saying that uh, you learn not only what to do by watching your colleagues and other people, you learn what not to do. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason on the Rogaine bottle that says do not spray on face. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to be the wolf man that learned that there was a problem with overspray. Uh, some mistakes you should only have to make once. So it's not only the superstars that I kept my eye on, but those that struggled and floundered and did things wrong because that showed me, you know, well, I'm not the wolf man because <laughs> I, I didn't have to learn that for myself. So I'm so going to remember that you don't have to spray it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, does this strike a chord with you um, that you'd like to, you know, give some share some thoughts? Yes, it does. It really does. And uh, just like Patrice said, um, uh, I, I worked in very um, mission oriented and results oriented companies in my career. And um, I generally had a place at the table, even from day one. And I didn't feel like I had to hear myself speak all the time. I observed a lot and I wanted to understand the process and the decision making. And I always thought I don't have to lead, but I don't have to follow. I have to uh, be, I have to contribute to the team's success. And I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. Those were my guiding principles. And as far as mentoring, um, the role of a mentor and an executive mentor, if you can develop that relationship, is very important. Uh, in my first job, uh, my boss was a mentor. And um, the way he helped me was at critical points in my uh, career in that first job, he suggested to me um, certain training programs, whether it was technical or leadership or um, functional. And uh, those were usually very helpful. And uh, I followed up on all of those, and I did develop lots of other peer relationships, very uh, healthy uh, give and take relationships. And I always went out to lunch with uh, friends from work, and we always talked work. <laughs> and so I guess I was really uh, driven and absorbed in it. I, I just loved it. And um, so, um, Another point is um, I always took time to invest in myself. I always followed up on uh, the latest skills and competencies and um, always invested in my own development. Great. Again, investment is so important. So on our final clip for today, Christy is going to talk about proposals and mentoring. Okay, it's wonderful focusing on that training and especially becoming a consultant because that's actually what all of you have become a part with SMA. So again, we're grateful that you're part of our team and we have a large amount of other associates as well, women and men, and that just really contribute and make an impact. 
So one of the things that Denise brought up and that we wanted to continue on was talking about mentoring. And I know, Christy, that we're, we wanted to have you kind of address how has your mentor like helped you in creating your career or meeting your goals? And when you were working with that, I think you've already kind of addressed how sometimes you would advance you know, as you were a military wife and you would move around to different things. But let, let's kind of focus now on, on the mentoring and, and have you share with us on that. You know, I have had several mentors uh, throughout my career, uh, but one in particular, and it, for me, it was never about advancing my career. I am very competitive and boy, if I write a proposal, I am in it to win it. There is, I live and breathe it. There's no way around it. Um, and my mentor taught me some really important things early on that, that I, I will just share with other proposal people that, you know, the RFP is your friend, but it's not what you see on the surface necessarily. Um, you have, but you do have to know it in and out. Don't just read the statement of work. It's every attachment, manual, subsidy that you can get your hands on. You know, the statement of work might say something like, um, process claims timely. So, you know, some writers, they take right off and we can process that claim in 10 days. Well, if you look beyond what was in the statement of work, you find out that timely means seven days. So you're three days behind the eight ball, um, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's one half. And that when you speak, it's never your opinion. It is backed up by fact, what's in the RFP, what the standards are, what's required. That's one half of the equation. And I learned from him the other half was intuiting what it is that the customer really needed. Why did they put it in? Well, we'll go with another claims example. Um, it, it might say you have to process claims in 30 days. Well, if their primary struggle in their program is that they can't attract and retain quality providers, then, man, you wanna get in there and punch as quick as possible. Boy, we can, we can three-day turnaround and your providers are paid. Conversely, if their biggest concern is cash flow, then sure, you can process that claim quickly, but what you wanna do in your proposal is tell them you'll cut the check on day 29 so they can hang on to their money as long as possible. So it's, it's about not just reading what's in the RFP, but actually understanding what the need is that your customer has so that you can design your program to alleviate every pain point they have better than everybody else. So, and he taught by example, a lot of things I couldn't get from him. I mean, this guy was impeccable. At, you're at three o'clock in the morning loading U-Hauls with the proposal and he still looks great. He was always calm, you know, exuded confidence at every turn. Um, couldn't, couldn't match his appearance, but the tools and techniques that he pulled out to make the proposal a winner, those were the things that he was able to share because they built on the talents that were innate with me. Um, I understood regulations. I understood how to research. And he brought those and took them to a whole nother level by showing me where to look to find out what that pain point was and what the real objective of what they asked for was. So it's amazing that sometimes if we just slow down and as you said, listen and look and learn how much, you know, how much really it just it can create a much bigger impact and usually a win as well, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Like I said, I I am in it to win it. Uh, and there is nothing more frustrating that has ever happened in the proposal world than you sweat and bled and gave up your life for six months <laughs> on this project. And then nobody bothers to tell you you won. You know, you, you, you read it in some industry magazine, 
you know, six weeks later, nobody even called to say, we won! <laughs> so uh, for anyone out there that runs proposals, it is so important to share that win with your team because the energy that is generated from a win and a successful project, it will carry you through the heartache of the next one. All right. Well, those are our clips for today. Um, and as we get close to wrapping up the town hall, we were going to bring the studio back on. And if we have any questions um, from our town hall today, and again, we have our amazing panelists on the line, Christy Woodward, Denise DeLay, and Patrice Williams. Oh, thank you so much, Heather. This has been a great town hall. It, 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 it sure, sure has. has. Yeah, it sure has. And are there questions? Uh, do we have any questions um, anyone would like to ask? I do have a question. Okay. Um, maybe something about a work-life balance. How do you ladies manage your guys' work-life balance? Great question. Well, Denise, I know you had a fabulous answer at the end of our panel. So would you like to share that again? Sure. My answer to that has been uh, working remotely. That really helps me balance the family and all my caregiving responsibilities. I have a teenager at home. He's a <laughs> high school junior. And um, I also have a family in the area. And uh, so there's a lot of uh, balls in the air. So it's really nice for me to be able to work from home. Absolutely. Patrice, like I know you mentioned work-life balance. Like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, I, I think that I try not to think about work-life balance because I think we get stuck into feeling like we're letting something fall. You're never going to give 100% to everything in your life. So I think when you realize that, you can stop thinking about it. Um, I have a kid. He is 18. I just dropped him off on Friday. He's starting college. Um, so we've made it through. Okay. Um, what I made sure was to show up for things that's important, important to him, important for my family. You know, I make the effort to be at family events. So I think you can't be everywhere at every time. You cannot cook dinner every night. You cannot clean your house every day. You know, we make enough money. <laughs> I think you should hire the support you need. I've had a nanny. I've had a housekeeper. You know, you just have to figure out what works in your world and not feel guilty about it. That's, that's great. great. I love that that's response, that Patrice. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have, uh, we do have one other question I just see. So uh, uh, suggestions on how to do continuing education, how to improve yourself. Christy, you talked a lot about that. Like, do you have any suggestions? Well, I know there are four books that were just written that may help. <laughs> actually, I've just been reading those. And you're right. Um, I, I like to do every single training opportunity that comes my way. Uh, working with SMA, you have ebb and flow. Uh, you have time when you're deployed and it's, you're, you're just so under the gun. And then you have a little downtime. Yes, the first thing I do with my downtime is, you know, ride my horse, see my family, remember why I went. <laughs> um, but the rest of that time, I like to devote to continually advancing myself. And some of the uh, seminars that they have had through APMP have been fabulous. Um, the government also has, if you're in the federal programs, the government also has. Uh, training programs that I participate in all the time that talk about the changes in how they're approaching contracting and the direction and goals that the government is now focusing on for their federal programs. So, you know, great, great, great suggestions. Yeah, Absolutely. indeed, indeed. So we do want to, uh, before we close off, uh, give a huge congratulations to all of you. Uh, I think the team there, Heather and Patrice and Denise and, and Christy, well done. Great job. Lots of great response from yep. the uh, from the seminar event uh, that we did with APMP. Huge response. And yep. as well from last week's uh, town hall and, and I'm sure from this week's town hall as well. No so thank doubt. you. Yes, thank you. And, and, and uh, you know, 
So again, I'd like just to echo that, AJ. Thank, thank you for, for showing up and participating, Heather, uh, Patrice, uh, Denise and Kristen and speaking out and speaking out. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And and shining. Shining. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. I was I was wildly impressed with with watching you ladies on on the on the uh, uh, seminar. It's